All right, welcome back to episode whichever we're on now. I uh, guess I probably should stop naming episode numbers and just say that we're talking about fields today. So last week we started an intro discussion into loads and boundary conditions. The, the very basics, you know, we click on a point, make a load, make a force, something like that. But very commonly we are going to be getting data from external sources that have loads. Uh, they're usually in the format of an XYZ location and some number, whether it's a temperature, force, magnitude, displacement. Like this kind of XYZ data is really what we're trying to resolve here with um, a field. So let me go ahead and bring something in. Uh, there's some geometry. That's, I suppose that's fine. Let me just uh, take a surface of it. Eh, I don't want that surface whatever. I don't know, just make some geometry. You know, it, what beats a square with a hole in it, or a plate with a hole in it, you know? It's classic. Just don't, don't fix what ain't broke. Uh, this new auto imprint is quite nice. I do like that. Uh, should auto imprint, or maybe auto imprint has to be on first. Maybe it's off. Oh, maybe it was on by default. Okay, there we go. Uh, and let me just delete this uh, surface. Delete. Okay. Play with a hole. Throw a little mesh on this bad boy. Oh, mesh size of 0.5. Perfect. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't actually really have any CSV data, but that's okay. Because um, what I do have is the ability to um, use what's currently in my model as a field as well. So there's all sorts of things uh, that fields can do. And again, this probably won't be an extensive uh, operation onto what a field can do, but it should be um, a decent overview. Um, so I'm going to come in. Oh, let me just do a little ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh, clear that out. Uh, grab some some nodes here in which to apply my field. I'm going to apply it via an equation because I want this to kind of vary because if it doesn't a field doesn't make a lot of sense if this doesn't vary because then you could just a plop a a force or magnitude on here regardless of where it is in X Y Z space. So I do want something to vary. I think I talked about the equations uh, yesterday or last time we spoke. Uh, okay, so I just varied this. I just wanted a little variation. We see that there's some variation. 20 times, you know, x squared will give me some sort of variation. Okay. So these are all not the same force is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a field out of this data because maybe this is my my global FIP, right? This is a pretty coarse, well, that's, that's a fine mesh. Uh, we'll call this coarse. And my idea behind this is, well, I actually like a little bit of finer resolution behind this, but I don't want to have to redo all my loads and boundary conditions because that's just an absolute bummer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a field out of this data. And this is where we can start talking about fields. So I know we're like three minutes and in and haven't even done anything with fields. Okay, so here's fields. I'm going to call this my uh, current model forces. A field can be different types of things. It can be considered continuous, so we can kind of interpolate or extrapolate depending on the, the data, or it can be discrete. I'm going to stick with continuous. I like this option. It could be real or imaginary. No, it could be real or parametric, meaning that this could actually be real XYZ numbers. So, you know, 111, you know, a location 111 in space. Parametric is this idea between, uh, it's more of an interpolated thing between zero and one, right? So regardless of what you select, I'll take your minimum bound as zero and your maximum bound as one. And then you can have uh, different options in there as well. So, you know, at, at 0.5, maybe you're 30% of your load. And then at one, you're 100% of your load. So you'd have a little matrix going in X and Y. Why am I talking about this? Why don't I just show you? You just sit here explaining, you know, this all day. So uh, you could have something like zero, you know, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, uh, is after 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and then one. 
on this axis and then kind of something you know similar but maybe different so 0.5 and 1 for the sake of time and then your value at these certain locations is going to be whatever you're going to type in so maybe it's increasing as we go parametrically in a u direction uh, so, you know, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But then this way, it's only like 1,200 and 2,000, yeah, so, uh, et cetera. So you can do something like this. This is what it means by parametric. This is what it's looking for. And this can have any resolution that you'd like it to have. But uh, I'll just put this in the background because we might need that later. The, the, the source that this can come from is, is quite a few places. Um, I'm going to happen to use my current model. Right, so this is what's loaded in my session. My session. This could be a CSV file, like I said in the format that I provided, or in um, another. Uh, these formats are listed online, but this could be some kind of X, Y, Z data, and then maybe this is going to be, you know, force, oops, force, force in the X, force in Y force and Z. These could also be something like temps, temperatures. These could be displacements in X, Y, and Z. These could be, you know, uh, what data. You know, these could actually be materials, properties. These could be all sorts of different things varied via location and space. Okay. All right. But uh, I'm going to use my current model. Uh, the second, the, the last thing that could be helpful, this could be results. So keep in mind, you know, HyperWorks is solver neutral. HyperView, we have all the readers, right? So why would I not allow you to just come in here and open up something like an OP2 file, right? And we would read that OP2 file and understand, hey, you have grid point forces in here. We could apply those as actual forces on a new mesh, okay? So um, the results is actually results. So we'll look at displacements. We'll usually look at temperatures. We'll look at uh, grid point forces. We'll look at... 1D element forces, those different types of things. And those can be mapped onto current things. So again, and you know, and there's matrix browser in here as well. Um, but I don't think we haven't talked about the matrix browser yet. So much to discuss. Uh, forces is what I have in my model, but you kind of see the options that we have in here. So like I said, materials, properties, moments, temperatures, offsets, you know, you know, all sorts of different options. Um, so what I'm really doing right now is since I don't have this data currently in a CSV file, there are ways to do this via the matrix browser, which I, I'm a little surprised I haven't showed you yet. But uh, I just want to take all of these forces and I'm essentially storing them in X, Y, Z. Okay. So these forces are now in this field via X, Y, Z data. So if I can come and look at this, if, um, if we so like. Um, they are, they are in here, meaning that I can go and essentially remesh my mesh, okay? I can come and pick this surface. Uh, we were at 0.5. Let's go to 0.1. We'll do something finer. Ooh, super fine, okay? And, uh, oops, one second. Uh, I don't think I saved my, there it is. All right, so all my, my loads are there. I didn't want my loads to disappear. I want them to be saved in, in XYZ, so show my loads. Okay, so there's my loads. Wonderful. Uh, I go to uh, Mesh, General Mesh. I should be able to select uh, the surface or uh, the elements, whichever I'd like. I'll just say surface point one. Oops, no, it, sh it shouldn't be deleting my. There they are. These are the values of the the table. Okay, so the table's in here. That's what we need. Uh, but now I can go and uh, realize this field onto this new mesh, right? So I can right click, I can uh, realize on these nodes, right? I don't have to be super specific about what I pick. Uh, we're realizing a force. 
We can do all sorts of different interpolation methods. So we could just do something by a search distance or proximity to the original node. Uh, but nine times out of 10, especially when we're dealing with forces, if you move a force, you obviously make a moment. So what we can do is we can actually run force balancing. Um, and let's do something like uh, 0.5, which I think was the original mesh size. So what we're doing is if uh, we can go ahead and hit review, so these are where the data originally came from. Uh, we're going to be able to hit realize. It says a minimum search. It essentially tells you what search distance you need. So I'll allow it to run the search distance. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a force and a moment, which kind of start to see here. We'll escape out of this and we'll get real, real crazy stuff. But a force and a moment <laughs> at all of the the node such that the total load that was applied originally is now applied as well, but it's all balanced, right? So if a, a load had to move, we have to apply a corresponding moment in order to counteract that movement. I think it's fairly understood, right? So obviously we have, have a lot of crazy load stuff going on, but if I were to run the last model, well, I'd have to constrain it and do some other things uh, and run this model, the total load the you know, uh, will, would be equivalent. So I think that's an important kind of note to make sure that you keep in mind is that um, if, you're, if you're mapping fields, uh, loads and forces, especially probably just use total load. It does run a solver. We have to figure out you know, what we have to do to make sure that the change in loads is, is equivalent. So. Um, that does do a little solver run real quick, but it takes, it's pretty quick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so these are, these are the fields, right? Um, just make sure that I didn't skip over anything. Uh, if we created a field, I want to make sure that, so we talked about the results. This could be an OP2 file, an XDB file, really any of the files that we have a reader for, um, H3D files as well. And uh, you pick that. Uh, just depending on the, when you right click to realize this, uh, make sure that you are, uh, certain things get mapped to certain entities, right? So I'm not able to select elements here because forces don't actually get applied to elements, right? They get applied to nodes. Um, if this were, if I, if I were mapping material or property, then the option here would be elements, right? So I, I wouldn't have an option to map to nodes because nodes don't really hold a property. So um, just keep in mind what you're mapping to and how you are. I'm trying to think of if there's any entities that can go to both that you have to be careful of. I'm thinking in my head and not much is going on up there. So I can't, can't really think of anything that you'd have the option to do both on. Yeah, that's, it's not coming to me. Uh, and then force, but is this new? I was mapping a force because of, of what I've selected and when I made the field. So. If this was just a general CSV file, you'd have to come and say, well, this, what we actually want these mapped to are, you know, uh, force and moment cards or temperature cards or SPCs or displacements, those different types of things. You'd have to pick uh, that. Um, with that, that's pretty much what I want to cover for fields. So um, I just showed here creating a field within my own option, but a lot of times you just have CSV data. And your biggest question is going to be, what format does this need to be in? And I would encourage you to look at the, the help document, um, our help for HyperWorks, and just search for fields, and it will list a bunch of different options for what this can be. These can be pressures, loads, you know, all sorts of things. Um, all right. And with that, I hope everyone's doing well, having a good 